presenta Tarjeta Naranja. Buenos tardes and muchas gracias. Muchas gracias for inviting me to this great uh, TEDx event called About 2012. I'm only honored to be here amongst you to share an idea. An idea, unfortunately, which is not mine. Now, an idea that has been conceived two or three decades back in the small Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan. This idea of gross national happiness and pursuing a development philosophy based on the happiness of people, something which was very unconventional at the time when we started off. So this is the idea that I have come to share with you in the spirit of the theme of uh, the event, Ideas That Move Ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, the architect of the philosophy of gross national happiness is none other than the fourth king of Bhutan, His Majesty Jigme Singhye Wangchuk. So the picture you would see is the fourth king, and his basis was that GNH is more important than GDP. And understanding what human needs makes them happy is vital to the society. So this was the conviction with which he conceived the idea. The topic of my uh, talk, while will be primarily focused on the gross national happiness, I will try and give it an international flavor by seeing how happiness could be applied in other parts of the world and to redefine and look what development could mean and whether if you can pursue a development with a different vision and a policy. When you talk about development, what does it come to your mind? Economic, right? So essentially, actually, development actually means growth. But what has happened conventionally is that growth has not been pursued in its true sense. It has essentially mean development which is associated with economic growth. And it is my opinion and belief that growth does not necessarily mean just financial or economic growth. It has other paraphernals and other requirements. Material growth alone is not reflective of true nature of growth. And there are evidence which says that there is a minimum correlation or non-correlation between economic prosperity and happiness or well-being of a people. Having pursued development with a vision of pure material or GDP-based vision, the world is facing a series of problems. And what are the consequences? The world, to my belief, is in a mad pursuit of economic gains. And this has caused a series of conflicts. Today, as you would agree with me, the entire world is actually in conflict. We are facing conflict of uh, crises. Crisis, social crisis, cultural crisis, economic crisis, financial crisis. And above all, the most defining issue or the crisis that we as humanity face, as Mrs. Marina Silva once put it, a crisis of ethics and values. The current pattern of uh, uh, alarming rate at which the consumption and production is going is not sustainable. We need to look for a solution. We need to look for an alternative. It is easy to say that we need to look, it's easy to say that we are in a problem. So what is the solution? This is the question that we need to ask. To do that, we go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves, what should be the relation between state and people? To me and my belief, a state without its people is no state. Therefore, there is a saying which says, as I am, so is my nation, which clearly defines that the most important matter or the factor in a state is its people. Therefore, it's individual citizens that collectively define the character of a state, and hence, it's the people that matters. The duty of the state should solely be to serve its people. Now, let's look at, if the people is the center of development, and this is what we should do, what should the state do, be doing? Are the states doing what they are supposed to do? To my belief, the primary responsibility of the state should be to pursue development goals that matters to the people. And what matters to the people, in my belief and opinion, is not just material growth. There are other requirements as human beings. The state should also make the right policies that promotes happiness and well-being. And happiness and well-being is a universal flavor which appeals to every individual, whether you're from Latin America, whether you're from North America, or whether you're from Asia. So the most factors that promote happiness in an individual is beyond the control of an individual. So therefore, the important role of the state. The policy decisions that the state makes has a tremendous influence on what the individual can grow or promote his happiness. Therefore, there is an important factor that the state has to play. And the best way to do it is to put people at the center of his development policies. 
Let's look at the conventional development uh, goals which have been pursued, as I said. It is either to increase your GDP, you're talking about savings, and increasing your, uh, or decreasing your financial deficit. These ways of, or approaches that, the conventional approaches that have been pursued, to my belief, is only a means to a greater end. And that end, ladies and gentlemen, I believe is happiness. Now, having said that, happiness is the central theme or the single most important factor of individual and therefore the duty of the state to promote those uh, conditions which promote happiness of an individual. Can we consider development vision and policy and base it on happiness? Is this possible? Many people would just agree with me and say that happiness is very subjective and relative and is something that cannot be objectively verified or measured. Therefore, it is not possible. But ladies and gentlemen, the experience that I come to share with you is something which will tell me that, or tell you that it is possible. Let's look at what has been happening in the uh, few uh, uh, months and years since the world has been f confronted with series of problems. If you know and if you agree, I think some of you would have heard uh, the former French President Sarkozy commissioned what is called as a Sarkozy Commission or Sarkozy Report, which was looking at alternative ways of measuring the country's well-being. So he was primarily looking at happiness as one aspect. There are also NGOs and independent thing organizations which try and measure the, uh, the, the happiness of uh, countries and try and rank them. And Happy Planet Index is one way of doing that. The latest of one being the David Cameron's report on happiness and trying to see where uh, Britain as a country and uh, the British citizens are in the measure of happiness. Then, of course, from Bhutan, we have had uh, this philosophy of cross-national happiness for the four, five decades, and we felt that it was our humble duty to try and share the experiences that we have uh, had so long experience. And therefore, we put it to the UN to uh, adopt a resolution which declares happiness as something, uh, happiness and well-being uh, as, as a fundamental human right or uh, goal. Then I believe there is something called uh, Club de la Felicidad somewhere in Brazil, uh, which is also encouraging. So ladies and gentlemen, let's see if Bhutan's experiences would be one way or forward to look at an alternative development paradigm. I will talk about the evolution of the concept I will then touch upon development of happiness indicators and then try and convince the skeptics who feel that happiness being subjective cannot be measured. We will also look at the operationalization of GNH. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a minute and join me and let's take a virtual tour to Bhutan. Oh, my sound is missing. Anyway, this is the map of Bhutan, a very small uh, Himalayan country. We are in between uh, China and uh, India. You would see the enormous challenge that we face as a small Himalayan country sandwiched between the two giants of India. You see the uh, pictures on the uh, side. This is to give you a bird's eye view of Bhutan. The architect, very intact. Country profile, only 300. Uh, 38,000 square kilometers with 0.65 million of people, very small, half a population of Cordoba, I believe. Let's uh, look at the ev evolution. As I mentioned, the concept GNH or Gross National Happiness concept was conceived by a great leader with unmatched vision and un unmatched uh, uh, a a statementship, and that was the fourth king of Bhutan. And it was propounded as way back as in 1970 when he, as a young teenager, at the age of 17, had to take the root reign of a country when he became the king and when his father died, uh, passed away in an untimely death. He had consistently pursued this policy and put the people at the center of development, and so much so that even today when we are a constitutional democratic monarchy, we still have a requirement of pursuing happiness as a development objective. The rational, as I said, human beings need more complex and than mere material needs. GDP growth does not necessarily lead to increased well-being and happiness. Evidence also suggests that. So just to give a pictorial explanation, if you pursue development purely based on GDP or financial, you will have the balance tilted. On the other hand, if you have just non-material, it will also be tilted. So what we look at is a balance between the material and non-material to achieve happiness. What is then gross national happiness? To us, gross national happiness is a development approach that seeks to achieve harmonious balance between material well-being, spiritual, emotional, and cultural needs of a society. 
and it is based on a belief that happiness is the ultimate desire of every citizen, and it is the purpose of development to create enabling conditions for the people. So how do we define happiness, or how have we been looking at uh, happiness, and what have been the defining uh, pillars which, which, which guided us these uh, 30 or 40 years of uh, development process? We have four pillars, equitable social economic development, preserve and promote culture, conserve and the environment, and then of course good governance. We feel that if you, as long as we have these four pillars in mind, we should be able to achieve GNH in any pursuit that we go. In terms of operationalizing this concept, what have we done? We have this uh, five-year plan, five planning system, and the central planning agency is the agency which is primarily responsible to uh, develop plans. So therefore, we have now have what is called as the Gross National Happiness Commission, which uh, maintains and mainstreams GNH into development policies. We have also developed indicators uh, uh, which help us to measure the GNH. So what is a GNH index? Is a composite static to measure Bhutan's progress in an enhancing happiness. It is consisting of nine domains, 33 indicators, and 122, 124 variables. Uh, excuse me, I'm running fast because I'm running out of time. <laughs> so what are these uh, nine uh, domains? We have conventional ways of measuring do uh, the pro progress of a country, and the, the ones which are highlighted in red, these, these are the conventional uh, approaches. And we have non-conventional, which are the following. Psychological well-being, time use, community vitality, and then, of course, cultural diversity and resilience. So we have nine domains within which we have some 83 indicators and 124 variables. We conduct an annual survey, uh, a two-year survey, to assess where we are going. And based on the results of the survey, we make policy interventions to correct in areas where we feel that we are not doing so well. To give an example how we are using the uh, indicators, for example, let's say psychological well-being, education, and community vitality in the survey results stands that there is a decrease in them. Then what do we do as a state policy, state interventions? We need to design and come up with the policies and measures to help uplift the psychological well-being. Similarly, in education, we do interventions so that we improve in the education domain. Then we have the community vitality interventions that are state policy decisions that need to be uh, designed and promoted. And a case example is in the education sector. When you looked at the education sector without the GNH lens from the conventional uh, way of uh, looking at it, it was perfect. We had an education system which you know, uh, was doing very well. The gross enrollment ratio was 120% or so and so. But then when we put the GNH lens, lens into it, we realized, hey, look, we're not doing too well. So this is how the GNH index helps to give a more wholesome uh, approach and allows the government to have policy interventions. We also have what you call as the GNH policy screening tool. And I'm not sure if any other countries have this sort of a screening tool where every major policy decision that are taken by the country in, in the context of any uh, development interventions are subjected to this screening tool. So as, as long as the policy screening passes the minimum threshold the policy gets through. But the policy, if it does not meet the minimum requirement, then the policy is rejected, and it is sent back to the agency which is proposing that policy, and with the recommendations to make necessary changes which will help make or promote happiness in the country. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, actually I'm not too, doing too bad in time, I thought I was doing very bad. Um, happiness, as I said, uh, is a universal human aspiration, and hence it is my belief should be pursued as a state development policy and not just look at the mad economic race of pursuing material prosperity. And in order to do that and apply what we have done in Bhutan in terms of pursuing uh, GNH, we have to look at different contexts depending on your regional, cultural, and uh, uh, religious uh, sensitivity involved and ask yourself, what does it mean to be a happy society? Or what are the parameters that would define happiness for you? For Bhutan, as I said, we had looked at the four pillars, the nine domains, and then the 83 indicators, which would essentially reflect this, this happiness of a Bhutanese society. So for it to be applied internationally or replicated in other parts of the world, 
those uh, states which you, who wish to do that need to look at yourself and see what are the parameters that would define happiness. How many of you are happy today? <laughs> I would say 90% are happy because you are the lucky 100 lottery winners, right? <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Presentó Tarjeta Naranja.